Greetings, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Mary Catherine Mann, your host on The House United. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. This is a continuation of the program in the previous one. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we air our programs for two weeks in a row. And uh, with me today are my sisters in Christ, Kim Berry, Margaret Master, and Grace Pierre-Louis. And we're going to continue our talk about uh, faith being the substance. It's something that we can hold on and be grasped. If you didn't see the first program and you would like to, you will find it on uh, our blog site, thehouseunited.blogspot.com. You will also find it on YouTube, and you'll be able to watch that program if you like uh, in its entirety, 30 minutes, on, uh, your on the internet. It's free if you'd like to download it, if you'd like to share it. We're here to share the word of God, uh, not to own it or possess it, but to give it to the world. And so last week, uh, or the last program, we talked about faith being the substance and what that is. Margaret, could you kind of review for us what substance means in that hypostasis? We talked about the <laughs> hypostasis and it being the nature of God and the evidence. Well, what I remember, and if I don't remember all of it, Kim will fill in, and and, speak and, Gra <laughs> and Grace will fill in. <laughs> uh, hyperstasis means reality, foundation, um, a good foundation, and reality, substance. That it's evidence. It's something. It's an evidence. Yeah. And then we went to Hebrews yeah. eleven one, and we had uh -huh. talked about. The, what it talked about in faith and, and the reality of God. And then we went to 2 second, second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, and talked mm -hmm. about being the agents of reconciliation, mm -hmm. that we are ambassadors of Christ. And as ambassadors of Christ, Amen. we are that substance that can represent in the world. So when somebody says, that you don't have proof, you have no documented proof, no empirical evidence of Christ on this earth. Well, we can say when we are living according to the Lord, not our version, but according to the Lord, according to what the Lord's version is of the godly life, which is the way it should be, we can say we are that substance. We are a representative. You want empirical evidence? Here I am, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> of, of somebody who loves the Lord mm. and who believes with 100% of uh, their whole being uh, and prays to be guided always by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, which is our, the way we uh, have God here on earth. So we're going to continue now. We're back, and if you have a Bible, you might want to open with us. We're going back to the book of Hebrews, uh, one of the letters in the Old Testament, a wonderful, wonderful document. It's, it's kind of in the middle of the New Testament, if you want. It's after the Timothys. And um, a great chapter is chapter 11, because this is where the first verse says that faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. But then it goes on, and it tells us throughout the ages uh, documents through history how that faith has been lived out as agents of reconciliation, as ambassadors of Christ. And uh, if you want to have something to hold on to, if you're having a hard time and you're, you're afraid to confess your faith, or you know, even if you don't say it out loud, people are going to be able to tell there's something different about you, mm -hmm. that you're a Christian, and you're praying in your heart and soul even when you look at them like I'm doing right now praying in my heart and soul that God will bless you. Yes. Um, mm. That here we have the representatives that we can draw on. And so we're going to read through this. We have several different versions here. I have the New King James Version, and uh, Grace here has the Amplified Version. Margaret has the King James Version, and uh, Kim has the New International Version. You know, uh, many people will say the best Bible that you can read is the King James Version. And I, as I go on in years, <laughs> like that, that version very much. But if you're not going to read the Bible because you don't like the King James Version, then whatever Bible you read will be better than no Bible at all. That's, that's so true. Man. If you <laughs> cannot understand, because <clears throat> it right. is hard to understand, I, I discovered the King James Version as being really wonderful when I started reading it out loud. 
because then I could put the phrasing and put the, the commas and everything and make it fit. Because if you, if you just read it through, it's not going to read through like words do today. Mm -hmm. so, but if I read it out loud and I, I put the phrasing in where it belongs, all of a sudden it just opens up beautifully. Mm -hmm. So, but to read no Bible is not <laughs> a good reason. Uh, there's so many versions, so many different wordings of scripture that are available to us today. And good, good uh, translations. Maybe not perfect, but they're based on, most of these new tr newer translations are based on original text. They're not based on some other version. Uh, you know, but there's, there's always going to be something in, in some of them that, that you know is not absolutely uh, right. And, and that's going to happen because of the human part that comes in. So anyways, let's get on to our wonderful faith here. So we, verse 11, um, Kim, why don't you share with us verses one through three, please? Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And here we go. The world was created out of nothing. Mm -hmm. That's true. The world was created out of nothing. So in that sense, the people who, who say that, uh, they're, uh, that the world came out of nothing, they're right. But the world wasn't created out of nothing with nothing. There was a creator, and that creator is our Heavenly Father, God. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, you, you, we didn't all come from a, a bug, so to speak. I would say a bug, you know. Uh, is this, there, God created species and in its own kind. I think that's the word that is the really definer is in its own kind. Uh, but this isn't about that today. We're not talking creation today. Let's go on. Margaret, how about, uh, do, do you need your glasses on? Or are you okay? I don't wear glasses. Oh. God bless you, dear. I, I uh, wish I didn't. Uh, God does bless. Yes, <laughs> and that's faith. Okay, how about verses four through uh, four through seven? Let's hear what four faith through is seven. God does. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Praise you know, the Lord. Here's a question for me that, that I always wonder about. Why were uh, Abel's, Cain killed Abel. I get that backwards sometimes, right? Cain killed it. Why were Abel's gifts more right than Cain's? Why weren't Cain's gifts good in the sight of the Lord? Well, you know, Grace, why don't you answer? <laughs> well, here it says, um, uh, he was righteous in that he was upright and in right standing with God. It was his heart attitude. So it wasn't the actual what he was bringing. Well, he ca he, Cain brought the work of his hands, mm -hmm. which was the fruit, and Abel brought the lamb, which was the blood, the mm -hmm. sacrifice. There you go. We come to God through what the time. precious blood. It was but there was something, sacrifice. It was, it was something in there, was his light. heart mm -hmm. that wasn't right. It was Cain's it was, heart that wasn't right. Cain brought it, the works. And we're not saved by works. We're, we're saved, saved by faith. By, faith, by the oh, blood of Jesus. That. Okay, let's it's a move picture. on. That's one of my big questions I always want to know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Okay. yeah. laughs> by faith, Enoch. We're up to Enoch now. By faith, Enoch. Sure, who, who's supposed to read? You. Okay. <laughs> Mary Catherine, I love you. Okay. Imagine me. <laughs> By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Mm -hmm. Grant that we will be found pleasing God. Amen. Yes. Is our prayer. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's Wait, are you going on? Oh, okay. Next verse. Six. Six. But without faith it's impossible to please God. We must believe that he is, he is a rewarder of them that, that seek Earth. him, that cometh to God. We must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the free gift of salvation, that is absolutely free. 
and that is that we please God. Mm -hmm. God is more concerned about our salvation than anything else. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, there's different ways that different denominations and groups put it. Because the evidence of our faith mm -hmm. is what we do then afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't speak for other people. My experience is, is that through my love of God, I can't do enough. I want to, if I could, I would spend every waking moment with God, praising Him mm -hmm. and doing His, uh, uh, whatever I can to further mm -hmm. His kingdom. Um, and certainly every part of my life is, is governed by God, but I want to be actively doing what I can. And of course, um, we have to live and we have to survive and we have to have something to put in our mouth, so we have to do things for our sustenance. But uh, to please God is the most important part. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, we, uh, going back to Cain again, we can't be, we're not saved by what we do because it's the motivation. We're mm -hmm. back to the heart and the soul and that substance. Mm -hmm. Okay, go on, Margaret. Uh, verse 7, by faith Noah being war warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Yeah, let's look at that word fear. We might. You fear. know what? There's nothing wrong with fearing, fearing uh, hell, fearing Satan, mm -hmm. fearing death. Well, it says in here, by his holy fear. His holy fear. Which mm -hmm. I thought was interesting. Yeah. And yes, it is. Well, God, you know, it says if you, you have to hate the world, mm -hmm. uh, there, you, 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 can't, you can't hate people. Uh, because that's mm -hmm. that's inappropriate. Hate sin. Hate sin. Yes. Uh -huh. Hate sin. But and, love and certainly, people. Love you know, people. when you think of, of spending eternity in hell, there's nothing wrong with being afraid of that. No, mm -hmm. that's right. Certainly, that's, we want to have as our motivation that's for loving fear. God, yes. because mm -hmm. God is love. Yeah. Yes. We don't want to have uh, fearing hell as our motivation to love God, because then that's mm -hmm. a man-made. That's faith. right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but a healthy fear of of what's Hellfire and damnation is not a bad thing. No. <laughs> and God wants us to operate in fear towards Him, but not fear of circumstances or people. First John four eighteen says, "There is no fear in love; dread does not exist. Mm -hmm. But full grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. Mm -hmm. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment." And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love and is not grown into love's complete perfection. Mm -hmm. So fear is not okay. Fear of people and circumstances, the times we live in, are, are, could be very fearful. But God wants us to know his love. So we don't need to be afraid. And if we have problems with fear, I know, um, I think we each ex experience it sometime or the other. And the thing is that God says in Joel 2.32 that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. And sometimes we just need to call out to God and say, Lord, take this fear away from me. Mm -hmm. Now that's not the holy fear that was mentioned, the fear of God and, and that's a respect for God. But the fear of our circumstances, fear of our day, fear of terror mm -hmm. is not okay. God wants to take that away from you and he wants to fill you with his perfect love. I, I might go one step further than that. Go ahead, Grace, good. Is that, uh, I'm gonna give an example of last night. Last night I was having a terrible time sleeping. Mm -hmm. Right now there's a lot of things that I need to take care of this week. And so I'm feeling pressured and I'm feeling the stress of, uh, even sleeping seems to be something that I shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing. I should be taking care of what I've done. Well, I couldn't sleep because I had all this anxiety mm -hmm. thinking, oh, here I'm trying to sleep which I really am tired, I need my rest, but I should be doing this. And so I had a lot of anxiety. And uh, to, for me to pray, Lord, take this away, isn't far enough. Because uh, I have this uh, gift that God has given me of faith, the substance. I'm going to say in the Jesus name, I claim triumph over this anxiety. Okay. And that I am going to not allow this because I think that anxiety is, is when, you're, when you should be sleeping or whatever you should be doing. And that anxiety comes in, that's Satan. Yes. And it's a, it's a way for him to get at you, to keep you from doing what you should be doing. Absolutely. All these little things that Satan does, 
and it's not Satan comes in, you know, bing, 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 but it, Satan will, will come in with his wiles and his little demons. And so last night, I claimed Jesus. I said, Thank in you, Jesus' Lord. name, yes, I yes. claim that I have power over this and that I have faith mm -hmm. that everything that I am doing is directed by the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I know that this work that needs to get done is in your care mm -hmm. and that you will have it done in a timely fashion and what gets done will be according to your That's will. That's the way to go. That's casting all your cares on him. Right, he cares and you know for what? You. That anxiety Good. went away. Good. Greater Praise is the Lord, Lord Jesus that's in Mary yeah. Catherine's heart than he that's in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, something as little as that. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, God's going to take care of something as little as that. He's going to take care of something really a lot bigger than that, yeah. too. That's right. Thank God. I, had a be I was cleaning all day, or working all day Sunday, and I was tired. So you to speak up. I was very tired. I had been uh, tired from the day before. Well, I knew that I ha what I had to do. But I said, Lord, please give me the strength. Help me to get through this day. You, it's not my strength, Lord. It's yours. I need it. Yes. And, and I needed help. And so I just cried to the Lord. And lo and behold, two people came and helped me that I wow. did not ask to help me. <laughs> Good. So wow. I, I, it was a, it was magnificent, and I just said, "Thank you, Jesus." And mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, the more faith, the more that I, the more faith my, I feel like my faith grow is growing, mm -hmm. and recalling when I didn't have the faith I have now. And think about disposition. You know that anxiety that I was carrying around, or the stress that you were carrying around. This, even if you don't verbalize it affects those people around you yes. where if you have this godly peace about you mm -hmm. that is going to uh, represent itself in the people around you amen now, sometimes those people are filled with a bigger demon than you are <laughs> and then what are we to do what are we to do then take authority pray take pray. authority but we're not to react in like kind we're not to react in like kind return love blessing that's right Respond right and love I remember when I worked at the, in the pharmacy at Target, we, there, we had customers that would come in that were always, we, we knew what was coming, and it wasn't pleasant. Mm -hmm. You know, when people don't feel well, they often react in a way that uh, is, is not appropriate. And so these people that would come in and they'd be really awful, instead of returning in like kind, which is very common today because, you know, people don't want to be disrespected. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you just, everything is abused, and, and sometimes, you know, people just don't feel well. And so they would come in, and when we would treat them with kindness, you know what would happen? Often they'd come back afterwards and they'd say, I'm sorry, I was sick and I really shouldn't have done what I did. But uh, I reacted out of my illness rather than the way I should have behaved. Or there were people that we knew, like I said, we knew they were coming and they were just, they had a sour spirit about them. I would go and I'd say hello to them and I'd greet them by name and I'd be cheerful. And that would change that whole disposition Mm -hmm. So at least it wasn't as bad uh, because I addressed mm -hmm. it from a, a godly kindness. Mm -hmm. And the Lord changes our hearts. And he, I was in the bank one day and this lady was ill. I said, may I pray for you? She was working at the bank. Uh -huh. So I just stood there and prayed in the name of Jesus for her. I love mm -hmm. it. You know, we're going to run out of time pretty soon. It's amazing how fast time goes. <sighs> I invite you to read the rest of Hebrews 11. Mm, and uh, I would like each one of us to talk about in the last uh, minutes we have here. We have a little timer here. You can't see it, folks. We have a timer watching a countdown. <laughs> and so I want to share about uh, times when it's been hard to witness for faith. So I'm going to start. And uh, I know Margaret and Grace, uh, especially you two who have been on the missionary field in other countries besides, and Kim, you who work in the church and, and deal with uh, people on a daily basis much more than I do. Um, talking about when we had our store, we had a store up at Osseo uh, for a couple of years and, and now we're in the process of transition. But we, I made it the habit of saying God bless when people would leave. Mm -hmm. God bless you when they would leave the store. And um, I got in this habit and then when I went to Lutheran Church of the Master, and among our, my brothers and sisters in Christ who I had a relationship with, we would end it with, God bless you. Well, you get in such a habit of saying, God bless you, that when you go out in public, all of a sudden, you know, you're at the checkout, and I'd say, well, God bless you, out of force of habit, ending mm -hmm. the, uh, the transaction 
<laughs> and sometimes people would smile and say thank you, and then sometimes you go, people would go, <gasps> <laughs> because yeah. it's such a politically incorrect thing to witness your faith like that in public. Yeah. And uh, even that small way of witnessing, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're saying. Uh, Christmas is, is coming up, and the, to be politically correct, we're to say happy holidays. But when people say happy holidays to me, I say, Holiday means holy day. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's There's so and many you, ways we. Yes. Mess. It's called free speech. So uh -huh. Merry Christmas or have a blessed Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that. there's nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that because we have mm -hmm. our right to free speech too. Exactly. We're not talking about just antagonizing. Mm -hmm. You know, but I wonder sometimes why people are so offended by that, and it's not God kicking against the goat. Uh, Grace, what would you like if, to share? If we don't uh, use our freedom, we can lose it. Use it or lose it, <laughs> we used to say. Yeah. And so we need to take advantage of our freedom that we have today. I've been in countries, um, uh, for instance, in Vienna was just next to uh, Hungary, which was part of the Iron Curtain country. And, and you were saying we needed, <laughs> this isn't exactly my testifying, but anyway, um, I experienced where people came in to Vienna and they were looking behind him and holding their Bible in a bag. They were uh, uh, afraid to expose it because of the um, not knowing if some KGB people would be there to uh, mm. arrest them once they get back to their country. Mm. And so I personally have experienced the horror of lack of freedom. And so um, also I was aware of the liberty we have in America and mm. even living in Haiti, sometimes it was touchy. You had to be careful that you didn't say anything against the government because yeah. some were arrested and put in the national prison, yeah. yes. which was five feet tall and a horrible experience. Mm. And so um, we do need to use our liberties while we have them. Yes. Kim, do you have any minutes? I have something else, but I don't want to take your time. If you have That's something. okay, go ahead. Uh, there's a story about uh, a woman, I have to tell this very quickly, a, pr a priest went to the Ukraine and brought Bibles. Mm -hmm. And there he brought a Bible and he said, they were giving him out and this woman, he said, do you have a Bible? And she says, no, I don't have a Bible. I've never been able to own a Bible. Uh, a woman I know has shared her Bible with me sometimes, but mm -hmm. I don't have a Bible. And so he gave her a Bible. Mm -hmm. And she opened the Bible and would read it. And then she'd cross herself as the Orthodox people do and, she, and she'd start mm -hmm. weeping. And she'd read some more of the Bible and do the same over and over again. Mm -hmm. Treasure the word. Yes. Mm -hmm. Treasure the word. We yes. have this opportunity yeah. to treasure mm -hmm. God's holy word. We do. It's not the book. It's what it's the is it's the word. Repre represents that God uses this holy word, that we have that. Thank you for joining us today. This is Mary Catherine May on the, whole, uh, on the House United with Kim Berry. Margaret Messer, and Grace Pierre-Louis. And remember, God, God always leaves the light on for you. Bye-bye. Until we meet again. Until See, the eternal things are things that cannot be seen. Is that true? The e yes. eternal things, really important things, are things that cannot be seen. Is that a definition? I don't think okay. that's wrong. I think Our things salvation. of heaven the, cannot the, be seen. I think things of God's the kingdom. The peace, the peace that passeth all understanding, is eternal. Well, people and pray for peace, and that's another mm -hmm. elusive kind. But right now, it's still in the hands of Satan. This couch is so comfortable. His glory is definitely a faith, eternal thing, but yet God chooses to show His um, glory on the faces of people sometime. You know, we, we have to remember awesome. that we are that representative of that substance. Yes. Ambassador. And Ambassador. without that faith that mm -hmm. I have, and without the Holy Spirit, I would never have been able to go on a bank and pray for somebody. Mm -hmm. You have to get to the point where you... It just came came right. out. I didn't mm -hmm. plan on doing that. Things mm -hmm. happen in faith well, that... God planned on it. God, God puts it. in our midst. Mm -hmm. Until that the secular life uh, disappears, then uh, I think that's a sign of very great maturity is when that secular light no longer exists in 100% of your life as a godly light. Well, I was going over to my daughter's for a party and I said, 
before I even went, I said, Lord, I can witness. Mm -hmm. What did I do when I went there? I witnessed. It's chapter five. <laughs> no, but I, and, and I, that's what I, I'm teasing when you, we Kim. came to it today, it was I like, know. yeah, well, I'm an ambassador of Christ. I yeah. am. Mm -hmm. God bless you. For well, that. I picked out for my life verse back in 1947. Galatians 6, 14. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You don't want to hear the rest of it. Sure you do. The rest of it is painful. What? Go ahead. For unto uh, the world the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> There's been a lot of crucifixion. <laughs> <Galatians> <laughs> two, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but the life I now live, life I live by the I faith of the Son of God, of God, God who loved me and gave and himself for me, for whom the world was crucified. And that's mm -hmm. my verse, and, and yeah. it still is translating for me. It yeah. still reveals itself progress. to me. Yeah. What is your life verse? I'm not ashamed of the power of God, for Amen. it is the power of God unto salvation so, to everyone that believes, to, to the, the Jew first and uh, also to, to the, the Greek. You know, the first time I said, Lord, all I want to do is your will, I'm giving yes. my whole stuff. You know what I did? This whole uh -huh. horror came over me. I said, now what did I do? <laughs> dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> no, I got I, 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 That's like me. As soon as I said, I... My, not my will, but yours. Uh, at you first. Oh, what I did what I, I do? do? I got scared too. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> it's the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. The I fear is to hate that. sin. Wow, I didn't yeah. Know else felt that way. Oh, well, now you know. I didn't either. That's good to know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do it slower and uh, really you sense it from the heart. And so let's sing it that way. This is going to be recorded. So, uh, uh, I encourage you to sing in parts, preferably one of the four parts that are... <laughs> <laughs>